Welcome back to the channel, guys. This is Ryan Alex Energy here, your host, Adrian. We're going to be looking at some solar panels today. We have them on the ground right now. Currently, they've been on the ground for about three to four weeks right now. So it's obviously burning a hole in my grass and ruining my yard. So we want to actually get these on the ground melt. And we're going to do that real soon here. Right now, we have the Hyperion 410 bifacial panels. Right now, we have about six of these along with the 200 watt red energy panel and some other lesson panels over here too. So we're going to get into the ground mount installation. So we're going to roll the footage back. This is what the project came out to look like. I'm not super happy with the quality of the work done by me. <laughs> so this is one of the instances where just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. So is this acceptable? Maybe. And it is to some people, but I don't like the the craftsmanship of it and I used the wrong bolts on some of it so I don't like how it came up I also have the brake cyst back here and it's sturdy but again it's not something I'm super proud to have for super stoked to keep on ground does it hold the panels up at a decent angle yeah it does but I don't actually like the wood construction and I still need more to get these on the ground. So we did order actually the Eco-Worthy ground melt kit. We actually ordered two of them. So we'll actually be able to get all 10 panels off the ground when they come in. But for now, this is what we have. And I'm not super, like I said, I'm not super proud of it. Um, it works, but I would definitely prefer like a metal construction type of setup. The panels are gonna work either way, whether they're on the ground or on the system here, they're gonna work either way. But for my own edification, I would like for it to be on the metal structure and we're gonna do that very, very soon. like that we're back with the logic of editing but back with the new eco word being the down mount installation with all 10 panels actually already announced it here so we actually have 11 panels and i'll show you what it looks like down on the other side but i think the installation came out pretty good um these are really solid uh, so my crafting machine is not the best and I'm not one to get butt hurt about it or, or make excuses about that. So I decided to go ahead and buy the Eco Worthy Hemp, uh, which is very expensive, but for that price, uh, I think it was like $600. Now these are two put together. We can see I'm walking through the mud here. These are two eco-worthy ground mounts put together and play looks sound right here. The one that I created. So we have that as like an extra on the other side. But so far, so good. These have been holding up pretty great. Um, the installation process was kind of brutal, to be honest with you. Um, I'm not personally... I don't really read it about the instructions, but this is the damage that having the panels on the ground did to, to my lawn. But, um, so, yeah, all over there. Do I care? Obviously not, no. Uh, 
this is not the house that I want to be in forever. So I really don't care. And I always remember grass growing back, but you got to get those kilowatts. Just having them off the ground has tremendously boosted the output. Um, we're seeing, I'm seeing anywhere from, especially early morning, I'm seeing anywhere from 10, 20, maybe 25% difference of a uh, level of output. So for instance, uh, 10 in the morning is when it really starts kicking in. It's 1049 right now. And we can go to the app, the H4 monitor app. And we're already at 3,375 kilowatts, um, I mean watts right now that we're producing. So now these are bifacial panels. Uh, they are Hyperions 405s and they are bifacials, meaning they're ready for 405 or 410, but they can actually get up to about 550 watts of power. The highest I've gotten is about 3,585 watts of power continuously. Now, with them off the ground, they've been averaging about 2,500 to 3,000 consistently. Now, if you can do that for over a period of time, that means you're getting about two to three kilowatts per hour. Now, with a, a 10, basically, I'm gonna say it's 10 panels because the one on the end is only a 200 watt panel and it's not that good. So I'm, eventually I'm gonna replace that. Um, but right now I'm super happy with the install. I can't, uh, can't say it enough. I've been able to charge, and, and I'll put the stats up here in the video too. I've been able to charge the Jeep uh, over 300 kilowatts up to date. So that means a full charge of the Jeep is about 17 kilowatts and just other miscellaneous things. I do have a, a sub panel now and that, that video is coming soon as well. So I've been able to charge the Jeep over 300 kilowatts. And if you do the math, 17 into, uh, you basically fill the Jeep up with gas, or, I mean with electric, almost 18 times. That means I can, on a full electric charge, I get 28 miles. If you do 18 times 28, that means I've driven an equivalent of 500 miles for free at this point. Now, you may say to yourself, well, that's not, that's not a whole, whole lot. But now I have a small array at this point. I'm constantly growing with batteries. I'm gonna add more batteries. I'm gonna add more solar to this array. So just for the future, and we're going to hook it, hook this into the HVAC system here. Eventually, we're going to be running the, a four-ton air conditioner just on solar and battery power. So I'm super excited for the future. Uh, yeah, you guys stay tuned. Continue to watch the videos. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. And I got to fix this grass. Um, it actually doesn't bother me, but, uh, you know, it looks bad. But until next time.